Welcome to Storytime from Space, a project of the Global Space Education Foundation. To learn how you can support this exciting project, please visit storytimefromspace.com. Welcome to Storytime from Space to all of you kids in school, at home, at your local library, or wherever you may be. I'm Joseph Acaba on board the International Space Station, and right now we, were, we are in the Japanese experiment module. Behind me is a small airlock that allows us to move equipment out of the space station and into space and to bring the equipment back in. Our story today is called Notable Notebooks, Scientists, and their writings. Of all a scientist's tools, objects rare and common, the lowly science notebook is most easily forgotten. Scientists write in notebooks about every plant and crater. Notebooks help them understand what they observe in nature. What makes a notebook special? It's a place to think and dream, to write down your thoughts and questions about all that you have seen. If you find a science notebook, open it and have a look. You will surely be amazed by what's inside this book. Reading such a notebook is a great way to explore. We can learn so many things from those who came before. Don't believe me? Then let's go. Let's travel through time and see how exactly how important one notebook just might be. Let's visit Galileo back in 1641. He drew inside his notebooks planets orbiting the sun. His notebook was a model of thinking that was new. His ideas, though quite correct, were not a welcome view. Galileo filled up notebooks viewing the night sky, observing moons and stars and comets as they were passing by. Galileo's evidence helped imaginations roam. Other famous scientists look clo looked at things closer to home. Isaac Newton was a genius. He truly did it all. Complex calculations in his notebooks he did scrawl. Legend says he thought, aha, under a shady apple tree. Whatever's true, he did define the theory of gravity. Measurements and data convey the greatest wonders, and Sir Isaac Newton's notebooks contained lots and lots of numbers. Mass a part of science no matter what you do, but other things like drawing can help you learn it too. Beatrix Potter was an author. She loved to write and draw, but she also was a scientist who recorded what she saw. Insects, rocks, and fungi all graced her notebook pages. The detail in her drawings is a treasure for all ages. Wow, look at those, that's a great drawing. Miss Potter used her talents to answer her own query. Sketching helped her understand the fungi's life quite clearly. Notebooks can be valuable to organize and review. They, are also, they also are essential when describing something new. On the rooftop of a bank, Maria Mitchell could be seen peering through her telescope as part of her routine. On a clear October night, something caught her eye. Could it be a bright new comet she saw zooming by? Indeed, it was as she had thought, a great discovery. Miss Mitchell, with her careful notes, helped all the world to see. Notebooks aren't just for notes. There's more that you can do. Scientists plan experiments and then conduct them too. Did you know that insects hear? Surprising, but it's true. Before Charles Henry Turner, it was something no one knew. Dr. Turner studied ants and bees in all the ways they act. His experiments uncovered things we now accept as fact. Cockroaches, we know, can learn. Bees see color patterns too. Without Dr. Turner's notes, 
We think that insects only flew. A notebook is a place to plan experiments or tests and also to see patterns in what data could suggest. High atop a craggy peak with a notebook and a pen, Dr. Lonnie Thompson surveyed Peru once again. He studied where a glacier lay, then looked back in his book. A single glance at early notes was all that it took. This glacier is retreating, there's no doubt at all on that. The world has gotten warmer since the last time I here sat. Scientists craft ex explanations. They find the missing link. Good thing that in a notebook, one can reflect and think. In a forest of Gombe, Jane, Good Jane Goodall sat quite still. The chimpanzees were very close, their nearness such a thrill. She observed for many years, described their lives in play. Her notes on their behavior are important still today. Many a page of journal writing helped her understand our relatives, the chimpanzees, and thus their, her fellow man. Dr. Goodall took her notes in a remote and wild place. Our next scientist notebooks have been to outer space. Hey, that's where I'm at. And look at those cool drawings of the chimpanzees. Very cool. Ellen Ochoa is an astronaut and a brilliant engineer. On four short missions out to space, she explored a vast frontier. Dr. Ochoa used her notebooks to describe her NASA missions. Another set of notebooks fulfilled other great ambitions. Notebooks hold the story of her various designs. She used many, many pages to think, create, refine. Inventors also use notebooks to plan, design, and dream. Sometimes the results they get are not quite what they seem. The chemist Stephanie Qualick, her job was to invent. She is now remembered for a happy accident. At first her best discovery seemed like a big mistake. Little did she know she found a substance tough to break. Her notebooks outline all the steps for inventing this strong strand. A fiber she called Kevlar would save lives across the land. Making sense of data can be difficult to do, but if you keep on trying, then you might find something new. And if you didn't know, Kevlar is a super strong nylon fiber, and because of its strength to weight ratio, it can be stronger than steel. Wow, that's crazy. Some of the things that Kevlar has made possible include body armor, tires, boats, and airplane wings. Charles Darwin wrote in is while sailing on a boat, and you need to use a mirror to read what da Vinci wrote. That's cool. Mary Curry's findings helped develop the x-ray. Did you know her notebook is radioactive still today? No way. Their studies may be different both in subject and in style, but the Modest Science Notebook has been essential all the while. Gregor Mendel, Albert Einstein, Rachel Carson too, they all relied on their notebooks. Now what about you? You can start your own science notebook and here's how. First, choose a notebook. It doesn't have to be fancy or expensive. Even just some paper stapled together will do. Your notebook can have lined or unlined paper, or even graph paper. Whatever you like best will be fine. Second, decide what you'd like to study. Maybe you'd like to watch birds or sketch pictures of flowers. Maybe you'd like to try experiments with liquids or look at pond water through a microscope. Whatever you do, your notebook is a great place to record what you are studying. Third, write about your findings and wonderings. Observing and drawing pictures often aren't enough to understand what you see. Writing about what you find can help you understand it better. Share your work. Just like the work of the scientists in this book, your work is important. Share it with your family, friends, or teachers at school. And you can see the different examples of notebooks and how yours might look.
So the scientists profiled in this book are a diverse group of men and women who have studied many different branches of science throughout history. And if you like, you can learn a bit more about them on the next couple of pages. Thank you for joining me for Storytime from Space. I hope you enjoyed our story today from the International Space Station. Join us again soon for another book, reading, or for one of our science experiments. Goodbye. Thank you for joining us for Storytime from Space. We hope you enjoyed our story today from the International Space Station. We hope you'll join us again soon for another book reading or for one of our science experiments. Until next time, we look forward to reading together again soon.